The Minnesota Wild have now won six straight, including one in dramatic fashion in overtime over the Avalanche yesterday. Seth Tupel of Locked On Wild is here to tell us all about it and how the Wild are getting it done. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin, glad to be with you. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. It's my pleasure to welcome back to the show the man who is covering the hottest team in the National Hockey League right now, Seth Tupel of Locked On Minnesota Wild. Seth, six in a row. A dramatic overtime win over the team with the best record in the league. Uh, I almost don't want to wake you up. How how good are things for the Minnesota Wild right now? You know, it's uh, first off, thanks for having me back on. And uh, it comes at a time where the Wilds have uh, have picked things back up. You know, I always go back to um, as kind of a wrestling fan back when I was younger. Uh, I go back to uh, the Jim Ross call uh, when Shawn Michaels was getting his sweet chin music ready, saying business just picked up. And uh, that's that's where the Wild are at right now. You know, they they went through that slide where they were two and eight over a ten game span. The goaltending was not great. The power play and the penalty kill were also bad. And it was right before the trade deadline. And so we're like, are the Wilds going to do anything, or are we kind of starting to see the magic wear off of this season? Bill Guerin makes the moves to energize the team. And they have just taken off ever since. And you look at what they've done over the last three games, overtime wins, and all three games had a playoff feel to them. The physicality, the um, kind of the the grind, it, trying to grind the opponent out in each of those games. And I don't think it's any coincidence that the guys that were brought in, Nick Delorier and Jacob Middleton, helped really establish that. And we saw it again against the avalanche, you know, that's, that's the best team in the NHL. And so some of the numbers look a little, you know, a little lopsided, uh, at least on the surface, but they're going to have their moments and you just have to kind of weather it and, uh, and capitalize when you get opportunities. And this wild team has just continued to do that over these last six games. And, eight, one and one in their last 10. Uh, they just, they pounce, they capitalize on their opportunities. They're never out of a game and I'll take an overtime win every day of the week. We've had three of them in a row. So let's, let's just keep it going. And, and what a dramatic game winning goal, Kevin Fiala. Talk us through that because that was just outstanding. So it's a, it's, it's fascinating because, you know, you go into the overtime period and the wild were on the power play. There was a a penalty called with, I think, 30 seconds left to go in regulation. Uh, the Wild nearly ended the game a couple of times in that span. And so you go into the OT period, and it was interesting because the lineup the Wild threw out there included Kirill Kaprizov, Jewel Erickson Eck, Kevin Fiala, and Ryan Hartman. No defenseman in that group, which you kind of you look at that and you're like, okay, that's... Uh, that's interesting that I hope that doesn't uh, come back into play the other way, but they, they get the opportunity and Kevin Fiala just continues to have a sensational season and he buries it. Darcy Kemper didn't have a chance and um, roof just came off the XL energy center. Uh, it has been really fun to see fans support this team in full because that is a weapon that you can use come playoff time if you have an arena that is absolutely raucous and fans are bringing it every time they uh, they get a chance to see this team at home which has been a lot lately but uh absolutely sensational game and you know an, another thing that has been so critical to this team turning it around has been the goaltending that might have been cam talbot's best game of the year and i say that with the fact that he has a couple of shutouts under his belt 
he was unbelievable from the time the game started to the end. You're going to give up goals to a team like the Avalanche, but he stopped so many opportunities. The Avalanche had a two on O breakaway, and uh, Talbot was able to slam the door on that, amongst many other saves. Just it feels like he's got his confidence back in full. And if he can continue to uh, to bring that, and Mark Andre Fleury continues to uh, bring a little change of pace, it's going to be a dangerous team come playoff time. You mentioned uh, Mark Andre Fleury. How much do you think his addition inspired Cam Talbot to play his best hockey? I, I think that was huge because you look at what the goalie situation was for this team pre deadline. You had Cam Talbot. He was the it was he was the clear number one between him and Capo Kakinen. And Capo was, you know, the change of pace. He was the uh, the backup who could come in if there was an injury situation. But it was never it was never really a situation where Talbot, even when he was struggling, it was never really a situation where he needed to be worried about, you know, getting buried and having Capo go on a run where he started a bunch of games in a row. He was always going to continue to get starts. And now you bring in a guy with Mark Andre Fleury's pedigree and a guy who is capable still of stealing goals, stealing wins. That's some clear cut competition. And Fleury is still going to get, he's going to get a fair share of starts the rest of the way. But I think it has, for the first time this season, it's forced Cam Talbot to play his best for fear that Flurry could get on the type of run where he gets a lion's share of the starts and he just doesn't give it back. And he just, his confidence is fully back. It's great to see. And uh, if both of them end up rolling and we go into the playoffs with two high goalies, jackpot. <laughs> How do you think the team would handle that? Would they alternate? Would they ride the hot hand? Would they declare a starter before the playoffs start? What would the approach be? You know, that's that's a tough one. I, I feel like they would roll with both. And maybe maybe it's a situation where, depending on how things play out, like at, at this point, it looks as though they'll host the first round. Maybe if you go to that second round of the playoffs, maybe that's where having a guy like Flurry who could go on the road and start game one of a series in Colorado. That would be a weapon I think the Wild could definitely lean on. But um this is gonna be it's gonna be a trial period for both. And if uh if one, you know, is the clear cut better player between the two down the stretch, that'll be the starter come playoff time. But if not, you know, they they can they have the luxury they'll have the luxury that not a lot of teams do where if you have a goalie that performs poorly, like in game one, they can just completely switch it up and they can go with the other guy in game two. That's not a luxury that a lot of teams are going to have going into it. Want to talk about a guy who maybe flies under the radar outside of Minnesota, but is having one heck of a season. Talk to me about what Matt Zuccarello is doing for this team. He Zuccarello has become the elite passer on a team with so many scoring options. And it's no coincidence that Kirill Kaprizov having the season that he is having is largely in part due to what Zuccarello has been able to do for this team. He's been healthy, uh, missed a, a few games to start the season, but has been healthy since and has played in a ton of games, which has him uh, close to the all-time single season assists mark for this wild team, which is 50. I think he's at 46 right now. So with, you know, 16, 17, 18 games left in the season, he's got a legit chance to break that mark as Kirill Kaprizov is going for the all-time single season points record and single season goals record. Uh, it's not going to shock me if he breaks it, but he just, he's such a confident passer and he's such he's such a capable player where if teams kind of back off in anticipation that he's going to pass to somebody, he's fully capable of taking the shot. And he's done that this season. It's no, he, he has a career high in points for himself. And so it's just, it's a top line that is just so lethal 
with those two guys on the outside and Ryan Hartman, 27 goals himself. So uh, Hartman obviously having a great season as well, but they're just so cohesive that top unit is. And, uh, you know, all the attention goes to Kaprizov as it should. But uh, you got two other guys on that line that are more than capable of beating you if you take your eye off them. Seth, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Make sure to check out Locked on Wilds. Uh, easiest thing is to just search Locked on Wilds, you know, wherever you're listening to your podcasts. Social media as well. I think we lucked out in every account is locked on wild so doesn't get any easier than that and of course you can follow me on twitter at seth t-o-u-p-s that's probably the most active spot on game nights and throughout the week as well so just give me a follow as well and we will continue to keep you as up to date as possible on all things minnesota wild as we push through the rest of the regular season into a deep playoff run all right seth thanks for joining us always a pleasure Thanks for having me.